two red kings. We have the king of diamonds and the king of hearts. You'll be left face down on the bottom of the deck like this so that they contrast the five of clubs. Don't take your eyes off the five. It's about halfway down in the deck. One, two, three. And it visually jumps up through every single card between the kings. The king of hearts, the five of clubs, and the king of diamonds. For this, I'm going to use two playing cards. I'll use the two red kings. We have the diamonds and the hearts. But first of all, we need a playing card selected. So you're not here, so I'll just stop somewhere randomly in about the halfway point of the deck. Let's say you stop me here on the five of clubs. What we'll do is we'll take that five and we'll leave it out jogged at an angle about halfway down in the center of the deck. So watch, you remember the two red kings? We have the hearts and the diamonds. We're gonna place these together face down on the top of the deck with a five of clubs sticking face up in the center. Keep your eye on the five of clubs. All I need to do is wave just like this and it visually jumps up between the two red kings. That's the king of hearts and the king of diamonds. King of diamonds, the five of clubs, and the king of hearts. But watch, we have one more thing left to do. If I take these cards, one, two, three, and I hold them just like this in my hand, all I need to do is just wiggle them like that, look. And suddenly one of those cards vanishes. Now we're left with just the two red kings. There is no more five of clubs. The five actually travels all the way down into my pocket. If you want to learn how to perform this trick, then all you need to do is keep watching the video. Welcome back to another episode of Fooler. Normally we do Fooler today, but in, it, I'll explain to you at the end. It's a very boring reason why we're doing a tutorial today. But it is a surprise tutorial, and this effect can be as big as you like. It looks cool in the video, but in the real world, that final vanish can happen in the spectator's hands, and that final appearance where the card comes from my pocket can actually come from anywhere, like in the spectator's bag, under their drink, even in the spectator's pocket. So you can really play this trick to be as massive as you want. I'm going to explain to you right now how it works, and just before I do, I will say you're going to need a double facer to make this work. If you don't have one, get two cards, double stick tape them together. That's all you need to do because the spectator will never actually feel the double facer and it's only in play for about 30 seconds and it's visually jumping around so they never actually get a very good look at it. So you don't need a double facer, just stick two cards together and you can still perform this effect at home right now. But let's dive in to the tutorial. These are the cards you're gonna need to perform this effect. So I have a six of diamonds, a double facer with a five of clubs and six of diamonds that gets placed on top of the six on the bottom of the deck, two red kings, and I have two five of clubs. If you're gonna use a gaff card anyway, you may as well use an extra gaff card if you're gonna use one at all. So the, the funny the funny fact is this, this five of clubs is from a completely different deck, but I'm never gonna show the back of it. So what I do is I preload this five of clubs into my pocket, the regular five of clubs and the two red kings, I'm gonna to take to the other side of the deck, but just remember the regular six of diamonds and the double facer are on the bottom. So I'm gonna take this five of clubs and place it five cards down from the top of the deck. So there's the five of clubs here and four random cards on top. Then I'm gonna have the two kings placed face down and we're ready to perform. So this is what happens. You talk about having two kings that are going to help you to perform the effect. I turn these face up and leave them on top of the deck. I'm now going to do a spread curl force. So I'm going to start to spread through the cards and I start to make a big mess of them. And that's just to give me a lot of cover to stop the card from flashing. But I'm going to essentially push over the four random cards. So in total I have six cards, but they're in a big, they're making this big platform area because in a moment I'm going to, force this five of clubs. And the way we do that is when I get to the five, I'm going to cull the card under the spread of these six cards, okay? And as I do that, I can spread these cards until a spectator calls out stop. Wherever they say stop, let's say they stop me here, 
these cards are all fed under the five. I square it up, I turn my hand over, and peel away the five into the center of the deck. Now I say, do you know that what we'll do is actually we'll leave the five out jogged, face down, so I can turn it around now, about half its length. And what I do is I place this at an angle, and this just makes the next move much easier. So I place it like this. I then take the two kings, and I can now turn the deck over. And because it's at an angle, it's going to allow me to keep this deck square in mechanics grip, which stops this card from spreading and exposing the method. Okay, so if it, if it wasn't at an angle like that, when I turn it over, I couldn't get a grip with my index finger to stop this from spreading. Okay, so it's at an angle. I can turn this over and keep it all nice and tight. Now I'm going to load this double facer in between the two kings. So I get a pinky break under this card. And you can either do that by using your thumb or just pushing over. And if you want a bit of cover, you can get a pinky break as you push over as you show these cards in their face here. And now I'm going to do this classic sandwich load. Basically, I'm going to, with the pinky break, I'm going to take one king. And now I have a, a double. And then I'm going to say this is the king of diamonds. I'm going to then count with this thumb the king of hearts and pull out these two cards as one with my other finger. So I go like this. Now I have two cards here and the king of hearts on top. It's a bit of a knacky move, but once you get it down, it's super easy. So I go one, two, boom, and I've loaded like that. If you can't do that move, you can simply do this. You can just place the two kings on top keeping that break right here. So I, now there's three cards above the break and I can just say king of diamonds, king of hearts. So I'm literally picking up all three cards if I expose this to you. So with the pinky break, I pick up all three cards. I peel off one king, then the second king. So whatever happens, I'm left in this position both ways. Now I'm going to turn the cards over and as I do, I square them to not flash the five, which is the double facer because that's the real position that we're in. Okay, so I'm going to turn them over and square them using the uh, using the face of the deck. So they, so they basically get squared like that. Okay, so using the face of that deck, they're squared. And I use my fingers to square these three cards as one. And now all I'm going to do is using my middle finger of my left hand, I'm going to peel this bottom king to the side like that. All right, so it looks like I've just moved it to the side. And that goes square on top of the deck. All right, so for that whole sequence at speed, just for you to see, I have the king of hearts, king of diamonds. We're going to turn these face down on top of the deck. This leaves me with a double here. What I do with this card is I place it to the side and forward and pinch it with my thumb on top of the deck, okay? Making sure not to split it. Because in a moment, this five of clubs is going to visually jump between the two kings. Now, there's been other visual jumps of cards that come up in between two sandwich cards on top of the deck, but a lot of times they make the mistake of having the card jump from this position back to here or into other positions. The reason this move, which I first published in Odyssey, my double disc DVD set from about 10 years ago, is so visual is because of the retention of vision. By moving this double forward and now positioning this five of clubs to be square with the deck, but still out jogged. When the visual happens, when the move happens, you're essentially sliding this card, this double card, completely into essentially the exact same position of this five. So no matter how close they look, with the cover of, of a small amount of motion, that five doesn't move physically to a different area of their field of view stays in the same place and that's what makes this illusion so deceptive I'm gonna dive in for two seconds really quickly if you would like to win the very deck of cards that i use in this video my custom design moonshine vintage elixir playing card sent to you for free anywhere you are in the world then make sure you're subscribed to my channel and comment anything you like down below i'll pick a winner at random my next thursday and ship these to you anywhere you are completely for free anywhere around the world sorry for interrupting let's get back to it with the five out jogged like this, as I shake, two things are gonna happen. My index finger is gonna pull this five in square, and I'm gonna push my thumb over slightly to 
create a bit of a distance between these two cards. And then my ring finger and middle finger are just going to kick this five square on top of the deck, but still out jogged. And that will give you this really beautiful illusion, almost perfect illusion, that this five jumps from the center of the deck all the way up to the very top. So now, when we're in this position, I push over the three cards, I turn over the bottom king, and say so we have the king of hearts, I turn over the top king, the king of diamonds, and now I'm just going to do a, a small convincer. So it's basically a frustration count, where I say we have the king of diamonds, so I, one more time, basically, I'm counting them king of diamonds, and the cards are in my right hand. I'm going to strip off the king of diamonds onto the top of the deck. Now, with these two cards, I quickly square them together and show the back of the five, and peel the five onto the deck. This is a frustration count, and essentially that hides the six of diamonds. The back that they're actually seeing is the back of this card, but it gives the illusion that I'm showing the back of both cards, okay? So I'm here, I say king of diamonds, five of clubs, king of hearts, right? So now I have these three cards, and I'm gonna make the five of clubs vanish. And the way I do that is I square the cards up, the three of them, I turn them all over, and I do this by turning my 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 hand around, my right hand around, so basically it's palm down, so from here to here, my thumb goes under all three cards as they're squared, my fingers go on top, and now I'm going to count two cards as one, so I'm gonna essentially count one, but really, if you look, there's two cards there, and this is super easy to do, because they're square, my thumb pushes everything except the bottom card over, okay? So I go one, as I do this, you'll notice this is the double facer. This six of diamonds is gonna go back to where it lived originally. So one, like that. Now I'm gonna do a false count of these two cards as three. So I say one, but I secretly have two cards here. As I count two, I'm gonna push over the top card, load it under the card in my hand and say, Two, and I'm basically swapping it in so it goes two they think I've got two cards here now and they think this is the last card the third card three and then I just take these two cards so at speed that whole sequence looks like this I say watch the three cards I'll take all three cards one two three and I've secretly ditch that five on top of the deck, but it looks so clean, so perfect, it looks how it should look. So one, two, three. I can now actually put the deck away, put it face down on the table, leave it face up on the table, it doesn't matter. You're really far ahead of them at this point. And now you can make the vanish happen however you want. So let's say I get rid of the cards. I could put these in between a spectator's hands, which is a really nice moment because they're gonna feel the magic happen. So I could say, watch, put the three cards, one, two, three, you can do the count again between their hands, you can do this little thing where you go one, two, three, one, two, three, which looks like three cards being counted. But really what's happening is I'm I'm riffling off one. For the, for the fake invisible second card, I'm using my pinky to flick. So I go one, two, three, like that. So it's, it's just a convincer that they're there. Anything you wanna do, but there's three cards, I could just wiggle them very openly. And then you want to display cleanly that the five's gone, that if it's in their hands, obviously it's a much better effect. And then I don't have another duplicate uh, moonshine playing card, but if I did, it would be the card in the pocket. But I just, I just don't have one, so I'm going to just use a random card. But then you could play it as big as you want. You say, look, the card actually jumps to my pocket. Or anywhere you like. You could load this under a drink. You could load this in their pocket. You could put this in their bag any place that feels impossible that you like because it sort of brings the entire effect full circle and what they're left with, if you ignore this is from a completely different deck, but when they when all the cards match, what they're left with is three completely gimmickless cards and the deck is out of play because that final vanish happened in their hands. So that's the entire effect. I'll just show it to you from the start, sort of so you can see the beats happening and play out in front of you. So we have my Double facer on top of the duplicate here. Kings go on the bottom or the top. And I'll preload the five beneath four random cards. And the whole effect plays out like this. We'll use two cards of this effect, the king of hearts 
and the King of Diamonds. We also needed another card selected, so I'll run through. Obviously, Cull Force, I'll run through. You can stop me whenever you like. Let's say you stop me here on the Five of Clubs. In fact, we'll leave it out jogged half its length in about the center ish of the deck. And we'll turn the deck face up so you can see that Five of Clubs. So, watch the two kings as I turn them face down on top of the deck to contrast the five as we square it up. Keep your eyes on that five, because all I need to do is wave, and it travels all the way up between the two red kings. That's the king of diamonds and the king of hearts. King of hearts, king of diamonds, and the five of clubs. So, but watch, keep your eye on the five, we're not finished yet. If I take those three cards, one, two, three, we'll get rid of the deck, you can place these three cards in your hand, one, two, three. Hold them together tightly. Don't let them go. Snap just like this. There was no need to snap. I don't know why people do that, but even I do. But now the five is completely vanished from between the two kings, just like that. But it doesn't vanish, it travels and travels to wherever you want it to go. In this instance, to my pocket. And that's the entire effect. One final thing, you don't need to make that five of clubs or whatever card you use jump to your pocket or into their bag, wherever it's going to go. You can just say, watch, the five vanishes and it actually goes back in time, back to the center of the deck where it's very first started and you can just spread through and take that five out and it's all sort of self-contained. It's just an optional thing. Now, you're probably wondering, why is there no Fooler episode today? Where's Kaylee gone? Is she locked in a cupboard under the stairs? She is, but that's not the reason why we're not shooting Fooler today. Basically, our schedules have conflicted and it's got nothing to do with me not having my wedding ring on. This idiot, Ross Waite, which is a pretty cool thing, um, was meant to get his wedding ring resized, but I didn't. And then we went paddleboard in. Yeah, you can figure out what happened from there. I've been spending the last few days looking literally around in the, in the, in the night trying to, trying to find... Yeah, didn't haven't found the wedding ring yet, so my new one gets delivered at the end of September. I can't wait to put it back on. And we'll be back as normal next Thursday with another episode of Fooler. I will untie Kaylee from the cupboard and release her for 30 minutes only to shoot the next episode. But I'll be back. And instead, I hope you enjoyed this surprise tutorial. So I'll see you all on Sunday for a live Sunday service special. And as always, we're back for Tutorial Tuesday. Thank you all so much. I will see you all very, very soon.